Okay, in this segment, I'm going to apply the conservation of mass equation from module 8 and the Navier-Stokes equation we just covered in the previous segment. Okay, and basically the Poisson flow is, the name sounds fancy, but in fact what it is is we have actually two parallel plates and the flow is generated by the existence of pressure gradient or a pump. Basically, I have a, let's call this height H, let's call this height H, okay? And this is, I'm going to call this X, I'm going to call going up Y, and into, out of the screen towards yourself is the Z direction, right? So let's write it over here. This is steady, this is laminar, this is fully developed. flow between fixed parallel plates okay so what I want to do is I want to look at some facts before I go out and write my conservation of mass and as well as the Navier-Stokes equations the first thing is well the study is given and it will help me to get rid of some of the terms that I'll get from this kind of relationship. Time is not a variable. It says laminar. What does laminar mean? If I have a streamline, it's going to go like that, right? What will happen is for the laminar and steady, the streak lines, path lines and streak lines are the same and they're not going up and down. You can see it's just parallel to this. So it's not going up and down. That's for turbulent and transitional. So that what it means is my V will be equal to zero because this is not going up. And also my W will be equal to zero as well because it's not coming towards me or away from the screen. Okay. It's just going along and the streamlines are like parallel to the surface. Okay. The third thing that I want to highlight is the gravity is in the negative GY of J. What I mean is look at it. The gravity is like this y is pointing up that's why i put a negative sign in here and this gy can be 9.81 if i'm using the si 32.2 if i'm using british gravitational note the negative in front of it as well okay um, and also i would like to uh, note that i'm going to treat this this may be related to this as well i'm going to treat this as 2d okay um, so there's no change towards me so if i have a cross section like this at this plane, if you have a plane one meter towards you or one meter away from you in the z direction, what will happen is this will be the exactly what's happening there. There's no variation there. Conservation of mass as del u del x plus del v del y plus del w del z is equal to zero. Okay. Obviously, I'm assuming the density is a constant value, right? In order to write me this way. Okay. I will have this term zero. Why do you think that is? right here I will have W will be 0 so that will be 0 as well so from here I will get my W del X is equal to 0 this will come in handy I'll ask you a question if W del X is, uh, is equal to 0 what will happen to del square U del X square and as a hint I can write this this way del del X of del U del X now you see why I gave you the hint right this is 0 what is the derivative of 0 with respect to X that is 0 as well you will see why I did that this was the first equation that I have approached. The second equation will be the Navier-Stokes equation. And my goal is to get the velocity distribution in here. How is the velocity distribution going to look here? Is it going to be like uniform, one velocity? No, I don't think so. Okay. Well, well, that's why we are here. We are trying to find that out. We are investigating this. Okay. So my recommendation, this is important. Write the Navier-Stokes equation in a direction of the flow. Okay. For sure. I do not know whether you need to write in the y direction. Writing in the direction of the flow is required. Okay, so that's my recommendation to you. Write that down. So if I go ahead and write my Navier Stokes equation in the x direction, here's what it looks del u del t plus u del u del x plus v del u del y plus w del u del z. Basically, this parentheses, the acceleration is equal to minus del p del x plus rho gx you see now this is the Euler's equation right so far plus 
due to the nearest stokes equation i have these terms del square u del x squared plus del square u del y squared last but not least del square u del z squared so let's look at this term what will happen to this term this will vanish why it's steady okay it's important that you um you know, for exam purposes, you write to me like this. If it's, ze it's zero, tell me why that is zero. I'll give you extra partial credit for that. If you don't write it, I don't know if you make a mistake, right? So it's important. It shows me that you know what you're talking about. This also goes to zero. Why? Right here. The del u del x is zero, right? So I can write conservation of mass. Del u del y. What happens to this? Del u del y, actually, I don't know. Why did I get rid of it? Uh-huh. Look at the v, v is 0. Similar logic, w is 0. So you can see the, the flow doesn't accelerate or deaccelerate them. It's going with a constant speed. Okay, something to note. Del p del x. Now, del p del x is the one that drives the flow. So I'm not going to mess with that because that's what the pump generates, a pressure gradient that drives the flow. How about rho gx? Well, I said it over here, up here, right? Look. The gravity is not aligned, not aligned with the x, so that's gone. How about del square u del x square? Uh huh. That was the reason why I did this. Look, del square u del x square is zero, so I can get rid of it. Let's call this conservation of mass. This, I don't know. I think that's gonna stay. How the u changes in the y direction, up and down between the parallel plates? Yeah, I don't know that. How about del square u del z square? Well, this is what I mentioned. I said this is 2D. There's no variation in into the screen or out of the screen towards me. Everything is the same. So for that reason, this very last term is going to go away as well. Okay, so I had a bunch of terms cancelled. This is why I'm using this as the first example for you. Okay, so let's see what, what I have. The left-hand side kind of vanished. The right-hand side, let's write it over here, minus del p del x. So there's a zero on the left hand side minus del p del x plus viscosity times right do not forget the viscosity times sometimes i see in the exam students forgetting this multiplication right over here because it's not immediately right next to it right careful so if i just simply move this to this side of the equation and take negative of both sides i'm going to cancel negative signs i get myself this way del square u del y square will be equal to one over new del p del x i did another trick over here you can see viscosity was here and i simply go ahead and put it down there okay so let's look at this is viscosity a number oh yeah it is a number how about del p del x see in the previous segment as well as segment 11.1 .1, i talked about this and i explained that this del p del x will be a constant value if i'm in the fully developed look what the question says fully developed so then this will be a number so, okay, I get it. This looks a bit scary, but it's still a number like 2, 5, 10. Uh, there's a negative sign in front of it because del p del x is negative. But still, it's a constant value. How am I going to find my u? Simply do one integral and get myself del u del y, and then do one more to get my u. That's what I'm going to do. Take integral with respect to y once. So if I do that, I get myself del u del y on the left-hand side, right? The right-hand side will be 1 over nu del p del x. Again, this is just a constant, c, times y, plus. Now, in a partial, I said that do not use integration constant c1. You need to use f of z and x in this particular case. But here's an um, interesting thing. What is u a function of? Is u a function of x? No. Is u a function of z? No. Okay. So for that reason, this becomes a regular derivative. Okay. So I can simply go ahead and write here plus c1. I hope you got that part. And then what I'm going to do is I'm not quite done. I'm going to take the integral with respect to y once more. And then I got myself this time around. I'm going to get u as a function of y it will be equal to 1 over 2 nu del p del x y square plus c1y plus c2. Okay, so I got myself my velocity distribution then. 
good. So I can I just simply close off the segment and call the day. It's been a long uh, equation. So uh, am I good? Well, not necessarily, right? You have two constants over here, which I don't really know at this point in time. So how am I going to find my constants from here? Well, in the end of the segment, last segment, 12.1, I took something called boundary conditions. That's what I'm going to take advantage of. Let's go up here. There we go. So there's something called no-slip condition, right? The, the fluid will stick to the solid. If the solid is not moving, then the velocity of the fluid over here will be zero. The velocity of fluid over here will be zero as well. So that's what I'm going to take advantage of. Note that this x is defined from the center, and this will be plus h. This will be negative h in the y direction. Okay? So let's write it then. So the boundary conditions. I would like you to write this to me very clearly. y is equal to plus h. My u will be 0, no slip condition. And I also have y is equal to minus h. Again, my u will be 0 as well. Okay. So then I'm going to simply use these two. So if I use the first boundary condition, 0 will be equal to 1 over 2 nu del p del x of h square plus c1 h plus c2. How about the second one? If I use the second boundary condition, this will be 1 over 2 nu del p del x h squared again minus c1h. y is minus h now, so I write, I took a shortcut plus c2. If I subtract them side by side, you can see this and this will cancel, this and this will cancel, and I will get myself 2c1h is equal to 0. So from here, you will get c1 is equal to 0. Okay, once I know my c1, so let me use this top one then. You know, this is gone. So my c2 will be negative of this. Let's, let's write it. My c2 will be equal to minus 1 over nu, 2 nu del p del x times h square. If I go ahead and uh, kind of write it in, so this is gone, so this term is gone now, so I only have c2, so let's write it. u of y will be equal to 1 over 2 nu del p del x times y square minus c2. 1 over 2 nu, well, plus c2, but c2 is minus del p del x times h square. I can do better than that. I can take a parenthesis. So let's do this. 1 over 2 nu del p del x is common between those terms. And I get myself y square minus h square. So this will be my velocity distribution between two parallel plates. Let's look at the maximum velocity. Where is that going to be? If I look at it, actually, if I plot this over here, what you will see is this will be like that. The maximum, this is the center line, the maximum is going to be like this, okay? It's a parabola. The maximum is going to be obtained here. This will be my, let's call this u max, okay? So when I plug y is equal to 0, I should get myself u max. If I plug y is equal to 0, then I get myself u max will be equal to 1 over 2 nu del p del x, those are constants. Okay, what is y? y is 0, so I get myself minus h squared. So this will be my maximum velocity I obtain in my flow. Okay, so I spent significant time on the segment, and don't tell me that I made a mistake. Negative sign? How can it be maximum velocity be negative? Isn't that supposed to be a positive value, right? Or did I may mess it up? Is this going back now? Like this? Huh. I hope you like my theatrical act. Basically, what was happening over here is my del p del x is zero, right? If I have a flow like that, if I have a flow like this, let's say that my p1 over here is equal to, I'm making sub 100 kilopascal. So I have another point over here that will be 99 kilopascal. Obviously, I'm making these numbers up, but you get my point. If, uh, if this is the case, because the pressure at the exit of the pump is the highest value, it's going down and down and down, okay? So for that reason, my del p del x is a negative value, so those negatives will cancel. I will get myself a positive u max value. This is worth noting. So what I want to do now is mean velocity. Mean velocity. So in order that this procedure is important for you to get, okay, so I will take... I will find my Q. Once I find my Q, I will draw it by the cross-sectional area 
that will be my mean velocity okay and let me show you what I did so basically this will be u right times a because q is equal to velocity times area right u times a now you can see here that I need some additional information to find find my q and that is the depth into screen is let's call it I don't know uh, b it's a neutral letter b okay so I'm going to use that because if you think about it, this is an area, so it's going to be B times dy. How did I get it? Well, let me plot it for you. This is the area that I'm interested in. This is the 2h, you know. Uh, this is the parallel place like this, right? Um, so what I did was take a small strip like that, okay? And the height of that will be dy because if you remember, x is this way, y is pointing up just like that. So now, and the depth of into the page here is b. So this is going to be b times dy. This will give me this area. And then I'm going to take the integral from, remember that this is defined from minus h to h. So again, minus h to h then. Actually, let's continue with the red color. I like the red color. I'm going to basically, what I will do is I will pick this up and plug right over here. B is constant, see what happens, okay? So let's do it. Q will be equal to minus H to H. If I'm not mistaken, this was a 1 over 2 new del P del X, Y square minus H square. Yeah, I'm sure this is right. Times B times DY. Okay, let's do it. Can I take 1 over 2 new outside the integral? Oh yeah, that's a constant number. How about del P del X? It is a constant value because it's fully developed. How about b? Can I take b outside the integral as well? Absolutely, it's just a number that's given to me. So it's going to be minus h to h, then y squared minus h squared dy. Okay, so then from here I will get 1 over 2 nu del p del x times b, and this will be y cube over 3 minus h squared times y. And I need to let us from h to minus h. Okay, let's continue then. So far so good. 1 over 2 nu del p del x b. And this will be, if I plug h, it will be h cubed by 3 minus h cubed, right? And then I will have a negative sign. If I plug minus h, it's going to be minus h cubed over 3 minus, minus minus becomes plus h cubed. So as you can see, this becomes minus 2, 3, minus 2 thirds of h cube, and this becomes plus 2 h cube over 3, right? So there's a minus minus, so that becomes 4, right? So I get myself 1 over 2 nu del p del x b times minus 4 h cube over 3. This becomes 2, so I got myself, this is equal to minus 2 h cubed by 3 del p del x times b. Let's not forget the viscosity will be equal to q. Okay, but my main goal is not to find just q, but also find my mean velocity, right? q will be equal to v mean times the area. So what is the area? Let's go up here and I'll show you right here. The height is 2 h, right? And into the page or into the screen is B. Okay, so it's gonna be, let's write it over here. So it's gonna be minus 2h cube over 3 viscosity del p del x times B will be equal to V mean times 2h times B. So B's cancel, one of the H's cancel, two's cancel. So I get myself V mean is equal to minus H square, right? Because it becomes square divided by 3 nu, right? Del P del X. Let's take a look. Did I forget any uh, parameter? Yeah, I don't think so. Yeah, it looks good. Before discussing this V mean, I also get you the U maximum, if you remember. And that was minus H square over 2 nu. Del P del X. Now we can relate those two. So you can see from here that U max is equal to 3 halves of V mean. Okay, so this is an important observation. 